Hello and welcome to Accessible Adventures. I'm Mel and today we are at the Field Museum of Natural History in downtown Chicago. Let's go inside and explore, shall we? Hello everyone. Today we are at the Field Museum in Chicago. We are going to be focusing on the dinosaur exhibit, mainly the stars of the show, Sue and Maximo. And anything else we get to see is a bonus, and anything we don't get to see, we get to come back for another visit. Now this mammoth beast is one of the man-eating lions of Mufue. He is over 10 feet long, 500 pounds, and was killed in 1991 in the Luanga River Valley in Zambia. At the time this lion was shot, it had eaten six humans. If you need the accessibility information, drop in at 11 minutes and 12 seconds. restaurants. However, it's the only one that's open at the moment because of COVID. It has easy grab-and-go food, and it's on the website it says that tables are spaced farther apart. However, you can see from the footage this was a sold-out day, and pretty much everybody's on top of each other, so just be aware of that when you come. The other option is on the main floor when you come in, there are cafeteria-style tables. So if you want to bring your own food and have a meal there, you have that option as well. I give you Maximo. Maximo is the largest dinosaur scientists have ever discovered to date. He's 122 feet across, 28 feet tall, and in real life would have been 70 tons. That's as much as 10 African elephants. His name means maximum or most in Spanish, which I think is pretty appropriate. And there is a picture of him, one of his leg bones, next to one of the paleontologists who discovered him for scale. Pretty cool.
too. Or at least her head, anyway. Sue is the largest T-Rex specimen discovered to date, as well as the most complete. She is named after Sue Hendrickson, a fossil hunter who discovered her in South Dakota, and was purchased by the Field Museum for $8.4 million. Money well spent considering a lot of people come to the Field Museum just to see Sue.
The Field Museum does a really good job of trying to be accessible for everyone. There is disability parking directly across the street from the east accessible entrance, as well as passenger drop-off. Wheelchairs are available at no cost on a first-come, first-served basis and are at the east entrance. There are bathrooms immediately past the ticket booth to your right, and they're spaced out evenly throughout the museum. Elevators are halfway through the main gallery on the north and south sides. There is a sensory-friendly app available on the museum website that allows guests with autism and disability to plan their visit better, and I'll drop in a link into the description. On a personal note, they have a ton of benches all throughout the museum, which were invaluable to me because it was more walking than I had planned on doing. So kudos for all the benches, because I've noticed a lot of places, specifically with COVID, have taken out their benches, which is understandable because they're trying to do the socially distanced thing. But if you can only walk a certain amount of feet without having to sit and rest, those benches make it possible to visit places. So the one thing I have found at these larger venues, museums, things like that, is they have more amenities. And this one actually has an adult changing table, which is fantastic. So it is, as you first come in the east entrance, it's the first set of bathrooms on your right. I really wanted to make sure that we got to see ancient Egypt today. However, I physically hit a wall. So this will be something that we come back and explore next time around. Well, we've reached the end of our adventure for today. Thank you so much for coming along with me. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and click subscribe so you can keep in touch with upcoming adventures. Until then, take care and God bless.